So you're, you're, you're 85 percent of Muslims are 90 percent. 90 percent of Muslims yeah. are Sunnis. So Maybe more, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So, so 90 percent are Muslim. Uh, so there are other sects. So for sorry, you, Sunni Muslims, Sunnis. Yeah, Sunni Muslims. You obviously believe that the God of Abraham, Moses, is the one true God that created the universe. Absolutely, yes. Okay. So what is it? Why is it that you believe? in Islam specifically and yeah just, just kind of give me a, a basic yeah sure um, so of that. so the for us the central doctrine is the tawhid you heard of the tawhid the oneness yeah the oneness of god so we do not uh, divide god we do not uh, believe that he's uh, someone who's like a creation in any shape or way or form yeah. And we believe God Almighty is the one who created everything. He's the creator, obviously. He's immutable, he's immortal, he's omniscient. So all these attributes of his are something eternally existing with him. Okay. So he's always had these attributes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, we don't believe God changes. So this is one of the key objectives we have between Islam and Christianity. Yeah. Because in Christianity, you believe God incarnated as a man. Yeah. Yeah. You see what I mean? Yeah. Now, this... For what, purpose. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so uh, this is what I uh, would like to discuss, if you're okay with that. The reason, the reason for that is because if, if your central doctrine is... Revol it, it kind of revolves around uh, God coming down as a man to take your sins away from... Uh, uh, away, yes? So kind of redeem your sin by dying on the cross for you. Yeah. Would, uh, would it be right to say this is your central doctrine? In addition to the Trinity yeah, and so on? Yeah, I think the central doctrine of Christianity is... Because obviously Christianity is born from the Old Testament. It's born from Judaism primarily. Yeah. And kind of the atonement is the number one, the atonement of the sins of the world and the opening up of the faith to the Gentiles yeah. are two very important components of that. So we don't just believe that Jesus died for the sins of um, the Jewish nation or the, Israel, or the Israelites. Yeah. Well, they reject him anyway. Yeah, they did reject him anyway. Yeah. We believe that he died for the sins of the entire world. Right. And so those are very two important. Yeah, so the, the atonement, the crucifixion, the death of Jesus Christ is very right. important. And, and also God becoming human being as well. Right. Important. That is the key point I would like to address. Yeah. I mean, do you believe God who is uh, divine can can change its nature from divine to divine plus human. So, before we dive into that, yeah, I want to say, what is your perception of the of the Torah? The Torah and the because this is an important thing. yeah of course. So the Torah which was given to Mu Musa alayhi salam or as uh, Moses as you say peace be upon him has been changed over time. That's what we believe. Okay, so that's cool. that's yeah. fine. That's fine. I, I there is still truth in it. It doesn't mean I, I disregard the Torah completely. There's a lot of truth in it. For example, Deuteronomy 6.4 says, Hear Israel, your Lord, the God, your Lord is one. Yes? Shema Israelu Adonai Elohinu Adonai Ahad. So you see, this is the core uh, passage. Like when Jesus was asked what is the most important commandment, he said, he repeated the Shema in Mark 12.29. Yes? So that is the reason I'm saying if all the prophets and if all the messengers who came before including Jesus Christ, if they all um, explicitly stated that God Almighty is one, yeah, yeah. yes, and they never said that God is three in one, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, why do we see that the Christians who came after Jesus, yeah, yeah. the reason I specify after Jesus is because in the Bible, no one ever claimed that God is a triune God or that God manifested as three persons. So, Unless you can show me some evidence, of course. Again, again so, so that's, that's not an issue, it's fine, you just presented that. So the reason I ask you about the Torah is because yeah. you asked the question, can God... Change. Ma no, can God mm -hmm. manifest in human form? Yeah, can God change, whether so, human form, because so, some religions, they believe they came in animal forms as well. That's what I'm saying. Can God change from being divine to something other than divine? Hold on. First, I want to focus initially on yeah. can God actually manifest in human form? Is that possible? Okay. Is that a logical possibility for God to if, appear? It, we're, not, we're, not, we're not even saying born. We're not yeah. even saying born yet or any of that. Okay. We're just saying, is it possible? Is there any evidence from the scriptures that God ever became a, came down in human form? I would say yes. Really? Where? In Genesis 18. What does it say? I've got to pull out my phone. <laughs> you have to bring it up unless you memorized yeah, it. So, um, 
Genesis 18. And this is the reason I asked you what do you, what do you, what do you think yeah. about the Torah? Because I do not accept your statement that the Torah is corrupt. But I, but I don't want to dive into textual criticism. So I think we, it's, yeah, it's, sure. it's, it's, it's way too high level. But it, when I read the Torah, which is the first five books of Moses, the first book, it says, Genesis, 8, Genesis 18 says, Then the Lord appeared to Moses by the trees of Memra as he was sitting in the tent door in the heat of the day. So Moses, sorry, sorry, so Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, there were three men standing by him. And when he saw them, he ran to the tent door and bowed himself to the ground and said, My Lord, if I have now found favor in your sight, do not pass on by your servant. But please let a little water be brought, wash your feet, rest yourself under the tree, and I'll bring you some food. So what? Right. So what? Why does it say there was God in there? Hold on. Is it the term Lord? I'm just trying to understand. That's fine. I, I want to. This is a very long verse. So I, yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't if you can I, give us some sort of a, what do you say? The context. Yeah. So we understand because. I want to know if you are assuming all those three were gods. No, 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 no. No, they I, were not. I'm not saying that. Okay. Because so what from, is the, from the context? Yeah. From the context of this verse, three people appear. Yeah. Two are angels. One is designated as the God of Israel, who appeared in human form. Yeah. Who appeared in human form. You mean God? You mean God Almighty? So, hold on, hold on. I'm saying God appeared in human form. Like, and, you know, and Moses, yeah, oh, sorry, sorry, yeah. and Abraham <laughs> realized it was the Lord. However, what we're not going to say is that the inconceivable God in all of his majesty appeared to Abraham. No, he, he took on a form that Abraham could receive from him. And he also ate food. <laughs> okay. So you're telling me it wasn't God Almighty, it was an, some sort of a form of God. Is that what you're telling me? Listen, listen to what you're saying. Because the same Torah says you cannot see God and live. Am I right? So you need to reconcile the two. You cannot exactly. see God in the flesh and live. You can see God in the spirit and live. Of the spirit is pure and clean. Hold on. We're, we're, we're talking. You don't have sin in your heart. You're in the middle of the world. You don't mind. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. So I think I should respect you. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Talking. So, so what I'm saying is, yes, the Bible sorry, says man. that you can't see God and live. Absolutely. Moses asked to see the glory of God in... Uh, Exodus 33 and yeah. God said that you can see my back parts. What does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> you don't know? Okay. No, no. I'm just I'm quoting. I'm quoting. But you need to know what you're quoting, bro. I'm, I'm you can't just say I don't know. No, no. If I'm, you're quoting to defend your argument, then you need to know what it means. No, you just said, you, you asked me a question and I'm saying, do I know what God meant when he said, you cannot see my face, but you can see my back? Yeah. You quoted that. Does, do you know what it means yeah, now? I'm back. So we, we can dive into that, but yeah. what, what, what I was trying to... I think my initial question was, does God change his nature? If you can answer God that... To, God doesn't have to change his nature to appear. But you just said he had to become a man. That's a change in nature. From God to man. I see a clear change in nature. That's fine. We're starting... What, what, what I'm trying to do yeah. is build a very straight... Sorry, bro. Foundation. Oh, sorry, sorry. I'm trying to build a foundation, okay? Yeah. The first question I asked is, can God, no, 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 the no, no, inconceivable no, 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 God, appear in human form? Is that even possible? And I've shown from Genesis 18, no, I'm not saying I've proved it. No, but you, you never showed us if that is the Almighty God, because the term Lord is used for David. The term Lord is used for many humans. The term Elohim is used for Moses. So just because you have the term Lord there, is that the reason you're interpreting that particular person who appeared with two angels is Lord Almighty, God Almighty. No. I just want to know why would you conclude that is God Almighty who appeared to you in the form of a man? Okay, it could be an angel, it could be a third angel. Right. Because when you read the rest of the verse, yeah. it talks about the Lord specifically. So there you go again, the term Lord. Is that the key? No, no, I'm not saying it's not there. The term Lord is there. But I'm asking you, is that the term you're using to conclude that is God Almighty? Yes, because this is the Jehovah or yet a word capitalization. Oh, so wait, wait, wait. It actually so, says Yahweh in there. Yeah, as, as, as we go further. This is, this is the reason why it's like, uh, this is a very long verse. Yeah. And it would be great if you could just read it or, or we could read the whole thing. You can, you can read the whole thing, my friend. All I'm saying is, if you're going to say that is God, then you need to reconcile 
the other passages, for example, Malachi 3, 6, where he says God doesn't change his nature. Do you think, wait, wait, do you think God Almighty is human? What do you mean by human? Well, you know what human means, no, no. like you and me. So, so I, I, I don't know, I don't know. Um, what, what, what I mean by no, no, you can't just say I don't know. No, no, if no. you're making the look, you're making the argument. Is there any evidence in the Bible that God came as a man? And then you presented Deuteronomy 18. Is God it 18? Appeared, manifested. It was a manifestation. He just came down. He appeared to Abraham in a form that he could receive him. But that's why I'm telling you that is a change in nature, my friend. So, so you're saying that God, who has the ability to do all things cannot just appear to a man. God doesn't go against his nature, does he? Does God go against his nature? For example, if God told you something, like God says, I cannot die. Yes? Yeah, yeah. Do you think he can die? You see what I mean? Hold you'll have a contradiction hold then. On, hold on, hold on. Okay, because what we're speaking about now is logical possibilities for a being who has no limits. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. When you see a being who has no limits, you need to qualify that. Limited by his nature. Exactly, exactly. So that's very important. He cannot go against his nature. So for example, if God says that he is all-knowing, he cannot become ignorant. You see what I mean? If God says that he is uh, almighty, he cannot become weak. If God says that he is immortal, he cannot become mortal. Here's the thing. Others you'll have logical no, and no, no, textual no, contradictions. No, no because, and, and this is what I'm trying to say, because what you're saying is this. There is a passage in Genesis 18. Okay, so let me just say that. Genesis 18, if you have an opportunity, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Just, just read that and ask yourself what has happened here. Genesis 18 is a story of Sodom and Gomorrah. So Abraham is sitting in his tent. Three men appear to him. He recognizes... The men aren't described in detail, but he acknowledges, he understands that one of those individuals is the God that he worships. However... Wait, wait, wait. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I think you added a bit in there. Hold on, hold on. Let me, let me, let me, let me see. No, but you, you, you cannot just say he recognizes him as God he worships. Did it say that in the Bible? No, it didn't. It does. It does. Show me why he said that. <laughs> the problem is, if I, had the, if I had the verse, I would literally just show it to you. Like, oh, you don't have the verse? Did no, you not just read it? Okay. So you do have the words. Let me, let me just kind of say my thought and then you can respond, no problem. Fair enough. You, 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 you can, you can Let's not twist the scripture, that's all I ask. Genesis 18, yeah. it's a story about the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Three men appear, one stays with Abraham after they eat, two leave and go to Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay? In Genesis 18, Abraham is having a conversation with the God of Israel, the person who is still with him, and they're speaking about how Abraham is going to be blessed with a son because his wife is barren. Okay? So Sarah, who wants to have a child, is blessed by God. God tells her that um, she will have a child a year from now. Yeah. And then Sarah laughs, and then the Lord, and then God says to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh? And Sarah denies that she laughed and there's this kind of exchange. What I'm trying to illustrate is the Bible, the Torah specifically showcases that God can come to earth if he wants to in a human-like form, if he wants to. No, but that's your interpretation. It's, I want to know not, from the scripture... It's, wait, it's in the passage. Yeah, no, you use the term Lord. The term Lord is used for many other people. Yeah, but you, you, you have to gain... In fact, Moses is called Elohim. If you look at Hebrews uh, no, no, seven no, one, no, yes, no, no, wait, wait, I let you speak. I think it's only fair you, yes. So when you use when you're using the term Lord to somehow understand God became a man from Almighty God, do you know any any Jewish person who actually takes the Torah as the holy book, interprets it like the way you do, where they interpret this terminology Lord in there as God Almighty? Do you know any rabbi, any? Credible scholar of the Torah who actually interprets it like this because I think the it's only so, fair we use we use the Torah and understand it at least from the people to whom it came to. Yes, this is, this Moses brought the Torah for the for, for the Bani Israel for the children of Israel and these are the Jewish people. So how do they interpret it? Because you're, if you're telling me until Jesus came, these people were all completely ignorant of who these three men were then you are somehow saying that 
all the Jewish people, including Moses, did not understand it. Because obviously Moses taught the people who the Torah and he would have interpreted this for them. So I want to know if you know of any credible rabbi, Sorry. Jewish rabbi, Sorry. who would have interpreted it like the way you did. So if we just take a step back again. Yeah. So the very first um, verse of Genesis 18 says, the Lord, which means the actual divine name of God, yeah. appeared to Abraham. Okay? Okay, carry on. So I'm listening. As he was sitting in the tent door. Right. So, so Abraham was sitting in his tent. Right. And it says the God of Israel okay. appeared to him. Right. And appeared to him in a human form. Hold on one second. Is that, is that what it's so, saying? Abraham lifted his eyes and looked and he saw three men standing by him. This is chapter 2. And when he saw them, he ran from the tent door and bowed himself to the ground. It doesn't mean he was worshipping them. No problem. I'm not, not going to dive into that. And he said, my Lord, we don't... See, this is, see, this is Adonai now. The first Lord was Yehovah, God of Israel, or whatever. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And the second... The second... Um, name was uh, sorry the second word was Adonai okay the second okay. name is Adonai as a reference to God it's like saying yeah. God as in, in Hebrew yeah, yeah. Okay. so and now we say if I have found favor in your son do not pass on by your servant so he's talking to his Lord okay. he's talking to his God at this point. and then when, when we go down to verse um, 10 it says, he says, I will, I, will, I will certainly return to you according to the time of life. And behold, Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. Okay? This is verse 10. Yeah. And Sarah was listening in the tent. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well advanced in age. And Sarah had already passed the age of childbirth. Okay? Then Sarah laughed to herself, saying, I'm old, how am I going to have a child? And then the God of Israel, who caps, Jehovah God of Israel, said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? Saying, surely shall I bear a child since I'm old. He says, is anything too hard for the God of Israel? At the appointed time, I will return to you according to the time of life. So we know from verse um, 10 to 13 that the, the Abraham is standing in front of a manifestation of the God of Israel in a form that he can receive. It, do, it, it doesn't mean that Abraham beheld the, the infinite glory of God. It means that God came down in a form that um, Abraham could receive him and, and commune with him. And they, and they told. So you still are saying that this is the actual God Almighty yes, of course who came in the form of a man? He says it in the verse. Okay, so how do you reconcile John 1 18 where he says no one has seen God? That's the infinite, that's, that's the divine. How many gods are there? There's one God. So which God you cannot see? That one God, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. That one God you cannot see. Yeah. So what Abraham saw cannot be that one God. Hold on, hold on, hold on one second. You really have to make up your mind. Hold on, <laughs> hold on I've been holding on so long. Yeah, you kept know. repeating your stuff, you kept repeating yeah, your narrative. I'm, I'm trying to build but I'm no no, I know you've already built up, but if you if you keep repeating it, it's not really building up, it's just repeating it. Okay. What I want you what I want you to do now is reconcile the two. Can you see God or can you not see God? You cannot see the infinite glory of God in a form that is not veiled. Okay, so can God leave his glory? God. Can he be without his glory at any time? <laughs> I, I, I like your questions. I hope I have it's a good answer too. Oh, no, no, it's fine, it's fine, because I'm, I'm okay. trying to take it one, one step at a time. Yeah. God is not limited. Sorry, God is not? Limited. Right. So God, the infinite God, if he wants to, can appear in a form which limited. enables finite beings to see him. So God, he said God is not limited, but he appears in a form that is limited. No, he can. That's what you're saying. You're, you're contradicting yourself. Do you not realize that? Because if God cannot appear in a form that human beings can receive him, which is called condescension in many respects, then we can comprehend him in any way, shape or form. We cannot comprehend God. Can you comprehend God? You cannot. But you're saying that God cannot appear in human form. Actually, God himself says that you cannot see me live you cannot see him in his full unveiled glory that's what i'm saying and now I'm saying. now my second no no my second question <laughs> following that is that god's full glory yeah. yes yeah. can it become can god become 
less than his full glory. If he wants, no, then he's not fully God. <laughs> Either way, you're stuck in a between a rock and a hard place. No, I'm not. You are, my friend. You don't realize that. The way you're constructing your question, okay. I'm saying God himself says you cannot see me and live. Listen very carefully. Because you're taking that out of context. And here's the reason why. Okay, okay which part have I taken out of context? Go on. Just tell me. The exact verse where Moses, God says to Moses, you cannot see my face. I'm using the New Testament. John 1.18. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And, he, and he's... No one has seen God. What does he say? No one has seen God. Right, yeah. Which God did no one see? The God of Israel. Good. Yeah. Is that the only God... The one true God of Good. Yeah. So if no no one has seen that one true God, except how did, Jesus Christ. <laughs> what about Abraham? You just you were just saying all along. No, no, no. I'm just, Abraham I'm, saw I'm, God. I'm saying in in, in in that exact verse it says no one has seen the Father except the Son who's in the bosom of the Father. Yeah. Go go continue. No, but I'm saying if no one has seen God, yes. It's called a it's called a theophany. So well, what's a theophany? Oh, I see. So now you're 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 going to say that's a theophany what Abraham saw. It may. <laughs> you want to explain for the audience what the theophany is? So we can understand it so better? What I'm, it's like, I'm, I'm yeah, what, what's the theophany? I'm Let's start with that. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you and I'm trying to... Uh, build an I'm, argument. I'm trying to build a foundation. Yeah. Because your central point is this. That the God who created the universe cannot manifest in a form to enable finite creatures to, to relate to him. I'm not saying it. God himself says it in the Torah. If you believe in the Torah and also in the New Testament in John 1.18, in both, I quoted both the verses for you, yes? In fact, you quoted the first one. So in both it says you cannot, in, in the Old Testament it says you cannot see God and live. And then you, you use the argument in his full glory. And then I asked you, so you're telling me what Abraham saw was a God who is less than his full glory. That means he changes nature. Full glory, less than full glory. Two different natures. You really... See, you when, see when you say nature, like, we, we need to define this word, what you mean, but because what, what, what you seem to be presenting is that the God of Islam specifically cannot, it, just for the, for the sake of appearing, he cannot appear in a human form if he wants to. Do you think the Jews believe this? Forget about the Lord of uh, the God of Islam. Do you think the Jews, uh, the Ju uh, Judaism, holds a view like you, reading from the Torah, that they actually believe that he came in the form of a man. No, they don't. So, my friend, you guys are the odd ones out. The Christians are the only ones who say God manifests as man. Hold on, hold on. No, 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 no. This is a fact, my friend. Yeah. You go home, watch this video, research, and ask any Jewish rabbi. Ask anyone, any credible rabbi. Yes, trust me, they will never ever say God manifests as a man. In fact, they will quote to you, you know which passage? From Hosea chapter 9, sorry, uh, chapter 11, verse number 9. You know what it says? Read it. Read Hosea 11, 9. It's very clear, they are the odd ones out, not the Muslims. So if you are, this, the Christians always say, oh, you guys think God can never come as man. So he's weak. Yeah. Actually, becoming a man is his weakness. It's the other way around, but they don't realize that. But I think it's, it's, what does it say? Where did you put it in? I am God and I'm not a man. So I'm God. I'm not a man. I'm not a man. And I'm not saying now, how are you going to reconcile? I've given you so many passages, you cannot reconcile them. What you're saying, what you're saying isn't, isn't, even, isn't, even, isn't even a thing, because what we're really speaking about is a logical possibility. It's, 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 does the Creator have the ability to appear in a form as a human form? If he wants no, to. No, no, when you say logical possibility, that is using speculation against God Almighty. I do not interpret the scripture like that. The way I interpret the scripture is what God tells us about him. Because as you and I both know, that we cannot fathom God's mightiness. Yes, we don't know everything about God. The only thing we know about God is what he has revealed to us. What has he revealed to us? That we cannot see him. That he is not a man. Like the passage you just read, Hosea 11, 9. Now why would, wait a minute. Why would then you use your own logical understanding? Because you know, using logical understanding, the Hindus believe in Ganesh, who is an elephant god. And that's not funny, by the way. This is their god. We don't, we don't make fun of the gods. But what I'm saying is that this is using logical understanding. The possibilities are limitless. How many things can you imagine about God? But this imagination doesn't do justice to God Almighty. What I'm saying, Samson, for your good and the good of everyone else, please 
do not blaspheme God by saying or uttering something against him which he never did. I don't know though, but when you read the passage it says that three men stood there and one of them was the Lord. Yeah, but did did and even did even Lord. Abraham consider him to be almighty God? No, but here's, here's, what, here's, what, here's, what I, here's what I don't really understand what you're saying. What? Because you're telling me he became limited God. That's why Abraham could see him. Because in his full glory, he couldn't stand him. He couldn't. He, he would have died. So we, and that is the reason I say, does God change his nature? Because look, either way you go, if you're going to read the Bible based on your logical understanding and taking literally what is said in the Bible, then maybe you should go and consult the people to whom the book came. The, the Torah came to the people so, if, 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 if who, you, who were the Bani Israel. Let me ask you a question. Yeah, go on. I feel like we're, we're, go, we're going into a lot of, we're going into a lot of, a lot of different areas. Do you believe that the children of Israel and Abraham, yeah. God spoke to them directly? God spoke to them, what, when you said directly, you mean like face to face? No. I mean, they heard his voice. Yeah, they heard his voice according to the Torah. So when we and you know what they said immediately? They were afraid. Of, yeah. They don't want to hear his voice again. Is that, is that the, yes, so but they heard his voice again during baptism. We, so that means God broke his own promise. There's another tangent I could go if you want. There's more than one way to speak out. That's fine. So when we read Exodus 19, yeah. it says that the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai. Okay. Carry on, I'm listening. That's what it says. Fire, thunder, earthquakes. Yeah, those were his signs. Yeah, I, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not saying I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that's gone. I'm I hope not. <laughs> yes. And it said that the sight of the glory of the God of Israel was like a flaming fire on Mount Sinai. Again, it's sign. It's, yes, it's, it's a sign. Okay. Yeah. And then and then in chapter 20, he spoke the Ten Commandments. But what I'm saying is, the idea that God can enter His creation, I don't see. Like, you don't see a problem with that. I, not just based on my reason, when I read the scriptures, it, it's, it's evident, there's many occasions. What if I show you a reason, sorry, scripture which which says that. No, but, but here's the thing. When which we says that. We don't just say, okay, God is not a man. And then no, no, not about the man. No, 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 but I'm, yeah. I'm making a point here. For example, we read Exodus 19, Exodus 18, sorry, sorry, Genesis 18. God appeared as a man, and then it says God is not a man. It, it doesn't mean that that means that that, that being in, in its form that appeared to, to Abraham mm -hmm. was the, the full revelation of God's essence. No, he appeared in a Well, then he changed them. He either changed from his full glory to less than full glory. You you need to acknowledge one of them. You can't have it both ways, my friend. I, I, don't, I, I don't know what you mean by this concept of changing because God doesn't change his nature by manifesting in a form that we can receive. Yes, manifestation is a change in nature. Manifestation, it's not, it's, okay. manifestation in other than himself is a change in it's nature. Really, it's not a permanent change. Nature. Regardless, a temporary even a temporary change, change is not something that God does according to um, Malachi 3.6. So, so Read Malachi 3.6. Did he appear in his full glory? No, he didn't. That was his sign. You just said it yourself. I'm asking you. I'm telling you that those were his signs. The thunder, the fire, it's whatever it was, those were his signs. It, it, it's it, not God himself. It literally says explicitly that the God of Israel came down upon Mount Sinai. Okay, now you're taking things literally. literally now, in the text. Okay, now you're taking <laughs> things literally. In Genesis 6.6, 6, it says that God regretted creating human beings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you take that literally? Well, 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 what? Well, I... <laughs> Did he not know his plan? That the human, the human beings were going to rebel against him? They were going to commit all here's sorts the, of... Uh, here's the question. Injustice does, and disobedience? Does omnipotence, sorry, omniscience mean that God can still not react to something? No, omniscience just means all-knowing. Yeah, does it, yes? does it mean that God cannot regret something? No, no, if God already knew it, why would he, why would he regret? Or does it mean that he can't regret something? I think... Looking upon evil. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did God know that man were going to be 100%. evil? Does it mean that he was happy about the fact You know, that when, when do you regret something? Yeah. When you don't know about it? Wait, you, can, you, you can know no, something is going to happen and still regret it. No, no, no. When you know something is going to happen... Sorry, rep repent. repent. No, no, no. You, are you using regret or repent? Repent. repent. Oh, God also repented. <laughs> <laughs> it gets even worse. <laughs> oh, well, I wonder whom he repented to. We're, we're going you know, we repent to God. Whom did God repent to? Another God? We're going into so many but you brought it up, not me. You brought up all these impossibilities, or rather, I would say, blasphemies against God. Because to me, 
understanding of God in Islam is very clear. We believe in one God, yeah. unchanging God, immutable God, yeah, yeah. Uh, omniscient God, immortal God, all these characteristics but, but about God, God Almighty. Come, come, come to earth. Yeah, but, but wait a minute. When you say God can come to earth, become a human being, do you think that is his strength or his weakness? For me, I, I don't think God loses any... I don't think the creator of the universe lost anything when he appeared to Abraham. He died. He lost his life I'm, on the cross. We're not, we're not even speaking about Jesus yet. We're just speaking about... How many gods are there, my friend? One God. Is Jesus God? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go down that lane. Okay. So if, if he is, then you're not talking about one God, my friend. No, honestly, look. You have to keep the entire picture of the scriptures exactly. you you know what you're if you're no no if you're going to go only by the old testament yes even then it's problematic i just mentioned genesis 6 6 where god regretted why would god need to regret a human being regrets yes when you actually do something and you uh you were not expecting that outcome yes say for example you build a house and uh, you did not have a good foundation oh not again all right let's let's try to stay away from that okay some people are arguing that so what i'm saying is that if you did not it, you did not build a strong foundation yes which you should have done and later on your house fell down and it, it crumbled basically then you would regret because you did not foresee that yes or maybe you so, you it so, occurred to you but you said so, so now, it might not matter so, so, for me, so i'm asking i'm asking you why would god regret if he knows the future the present and the past all the time because god hates looking upon evil and so for him to see evil so for him to see human beings involved in all kinds of wicked practices it frustrates him and angers him because god get angry about things according he's got, to he's got allowed to get angry. wait wait when you talk about anger do you think it's anger like ours no, no exactly no so way. do not compare us to and we can't even compare what what it means for god to regret to us because it's a different actually it gives us a reason why he regretted for creating human beings yeah no, okay read genesis 6 6 it's very clear I know. the passage there is, yeah. and then you know what happens after he, after he regrets what happens straight after that go, go, go. have you not read genesis 6 go, go, go. The flood of Noah, he wipes out entire uh, humanity and obviously all the animals and plants and all the other living things. So can you imagine this? If God had already foreseen this, number one, he wouldn't have regretted it. Number two, he would have uh, not wiped out the entire mankind uh, for something that he had already foreseen. Uh, again, uh, sorry, I think it's, it's like rebooting your your computer because it's something is broken down. So let's reboot it. Let's start all over again. Forget all the f computer files which are oh, not saved it's, yet. It's a judgment. God judged the nation. Right? God judged many nations. He judged Sodom and Gomorrah. Oh yeah, of course he does so, that. But I'm and, asking. And he knew that they were going to. God's be judgment is something that he he warns them first. He does, he doesn't just judge them. So always God warns the people many times. He sends his messengers. He sends his prophets. And that is the reason I'm saying. Look, the reason as a Muslim I don't believe God needs to come down as a man is because he always was sending warners and people to give them uh, to give them glad tidings as well about uh, the rewards that they would have if they obey God. So I'm saying warning and um, good tidings of a reward from God Almighty was always in the form of prophets and messengers why would God need to come down as a man and die for you why, why did God need to come upon Mount Sinai and speak to the children of Israel directly sorry why did God need to speak the command actually he didn't speak to them directly because they didn't see him they would have died if that if it was direct I, I, what I'm saying is they heard his voice it was, they heard the direct voice of God why did God have to speak himself if, why, why couldn't you just send an angel to when you talk about direct voice yes that itself shows us that he did not show himself in its full glory <laughs> you see what i mean the reason the reason that actually works in a way is because if he's not showing his full glory yes which is the condition of if you see god you'll die okay so obviously he doesn't want to kill them you see the face of god as well yes but even this voice they didn't want to hear later on which only means that the voice itself is something which is part of God according to the Torah they did not want to hear and God, God, God so, took that covenant from them and that he'll not and this is what I mean. so make them when, hear his when, voice when, again when you're, when you're reading these things you, yeah. you said for example show me a Jewish rabbi. scholar or yeah. rabbi who would interpret Genesis 18 as the fact that the Lord appeared to him the words are explicit and this is where for me that's why I'm telling you if you take things literally then you'll have a lot of problem in the Bible my friend a lot of problem 
what I'm what I'm saying is I, I appreciate that there are some verses where we, 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 we you can read it literally, but when it says the Lord appeared to Abraham, when it says that the, the children of Israel, sorry, the um, uh, Moses, Nadab, and Abihu saw the God of Israel. Say again. In, in um, Exodus 24, it says that the. Uh, um, Abraham made that in the Bible, he saw the God of Israel on top of Mount Sinai and under his feet was a uh, sapphire stone. Yeah. Yeah. This, yeah, I, I've heard of that, yeah. But how the Jewish rabbis interpret this is it's metaphorical. They don't really, because look. How they interpret if, it. Yes. And that's the point. And how do you interpret you cannot see God and live? How do you interpret You, you still haven't given me an answer. I've been asking you this and, and, and then, from the very and, beginning. And in the same verse it says, but you can see my back. In the same verse, and I asked you what was the back. You didn't know that. <laughs> you see what I mean? So you, let's, you, if you're going to interpret things yeah. literally, then you need to say back as the back of God. <laughs> Which part of the back we don't know? You see what I mean? Oh no! So, so, so listen, listen. See, I'm not, I'm that's what I'm saying, that. Samson. That's what I'm saying. You need to go back to the scholars no, of the of the Torah rather than self-interpreting it no, but, no, but literally the because they might give you some insight which you might not have come across different opinions and i and I, I, I i definitely appreciate the um no but okay so the the the, the, the central point of our discussion today was okay we're going to talk about the answer christ what, what, what I, no the central point is does god change his nature that was the central point not his essential nature but can god manifest yes he can no, but, but that that's seen. but then if you okay if you're talking about manifesting in other than his nature then you still have another problem. You're changing his nature. Because to me, God's nature is fully God all the time. Not like he becomes semi-God or maybe just a fraction of God where you can actually see him now. I mean, come on. It's the we have the we have a lot of, you, you will have a lot of issues with that if you're going to keep interpreting uh, or self-interpreting by using just your logic all the time and completely, um, yeah. what do you say, ignoring the context of, and the other passages. Yeah. Which actually would be contradiction. You know, one of the one of the key um, principles in the Quran is that Allah says that if this book, meaning the Quran, is from anyone other than Allah, surely you'll find a lot of contradictions and discrepancies in it. So Allah is telling you that other than God Almighty, uh, yes, every other book which claims to be from God Almighty, yes, even if they're claiming it, like falsely allege alleging that is from God they will have a lot of contradictions and that is what I've actually highlighted here the number of contradictions I could actually bring up for every uh, for every passage that you showed me where he says God became a man for every one of them I can show you another passage in the Bible which completely contradicts what he said in me saying that God appeared to Abraham as a man as it is explicitly says in the text then he's not fully God. When you it, say man, that's does a change not in nature. Mean that God is a man in his essential essence. No, he became a man. At that manifestation. Yeah, so when he became a man, is he a man or God and man? He's God. He's not man. <laughs> <laughs> so he became a man, but he's not a man. I mean, come on, have you not realized what you're even no, saying, no, no, my friend? No, no. It's, the way it's you, full it's, of it's, contradictions. No, it's the way you're saying it. Okay, you are the one who said he became man. And then when I asked you, is he a man? You're saying, saying no. <laughs> in the Old Testament, yes. Abraham, the Bible says the Lord appeared to Abraham. Yehovah. I think we have done this to death now. Yeah, we have, okay, so, so let's, let's move on. Let me give you another passage. Let's let's Do you know the passage on. where uh, Jacob wrestles with God? Yeah, yeah. Is that God or angel? <laughs> <laughs> Many people don't know, you know, the term Israel actually means struggle with God. The term Israel means someone who struggles with God, wrestles with God in, in, in some passages. Now, wait, wait, wait. Can you imagine wrestling with God? I mean, what chances have you got? The very sight, the very sight will kill you. Forget about wrestling. So anyway, look. You see, would you would you interpret that literally, or would you actually say this is metaphoric? Because this is where the fun begins now for you. If you're going to be literal, a literalist, because a literalist will have a lot of issues for every other passage in the Bible. I love the fact you just brought it up. That was like so amazing. Um, well, 
Now let's, shall we move to the New Testament now? Uh, if you're done with the Old Testament? I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, Old I'm, Testament is I'm, going I'm, to I'm, I'm not gonna, really help you much here. I'm going to say, I don't know, but what I want to say is just quickly before we do do that, because yeah, yeah. I, I acknowledge that's a difficult passage there. But what I want to say is this. You see here where it says... Is it okay if you stand a bit? Sorry, meter sorry, apart. Sorry. That's fine. Thank you. Here it says, Abraham says to God, show me your glory. Then God says, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. And, I, and, and but he says, but you shall not see my face, for no man shall see me and live. And the Lord said, and he put me the rock. Yeah, so I just wanted to con con confirm that. He says, so my glory shall pass in front of you, and I will cover you with my hand while I pass by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. But as far as what the back of God is, no, no idea. No <laughs> yeah, idea. Let's, let's, so, let's, leave, let's park that if you don't know what it is. That. And that's what I'm saying. If you're going to uh, interpret everything, literally me, you'll have a lot of issues. For me, for me I, so, I, I know how I would interpret that, but yeah. I know you wouldn't accept let, that. Let's, let's deal I'll with the... You saw the Son of God there, but no problem. Why? You, he saw. So why can't people saw the face of the Son of God? <laughs> why can't Why can't Abraham see it? Did people not see Jesus? And if that is what your Son of God is interpreting as, no, so why can't I, I, Why can't I mean a pre-existent Son? You, have, have you ever read the book of Ezekiel, chapter one, yeah, verse twenty-six? I, I don't remember it. Where Ezekiel sees a vision of vision of. Vision oh, I see. Of yeah. Okay. He sees a vision. Yeah. And he sees one like the Son of Man seated on a throne. Right. And he describes him as having a, a body full of. Um, completely covered in fire and stuff like that. Yeah. Have, you ever, have you ever read that before? Yeah. So people had visions of, you know, Isaiah, for example, he had a vision of the Lord as well in heaven. Yeah. John says that was Jesus. Yeah. Daniel as well. Yeah. Yeah. Daniel had a vision. Do you know Daniel is also called the Son of Man by yeah, angel? No, 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 yes. That's fine, that's fine. So Son of Man means what? A human being. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. What I'm saying means is, a human being. See, this, this is where interpretation becomes difficult. But let's let's move on to the New Testament, right? Yeah. Because I think if, so, I, if I start diving so, into this, so more, more. New Testament. I mean, Old Testament. So we already can God become a man. We I'm saying there's, there's evidence in the, in the scriptures of appearing. But then that is a man. change in nature. You need to reconcile that, my no, friend. In Hosea 11, so it says God is not a man. God does explicitly. God is not a man. That's fine. What more you want? That's fine. That's fine. Are you saying God is lying, I'm, telling lies I'm, in the Old I'm, Testament, I'm, and then He switches uh, in the New Testament? I'm saying God is lying, but I'm saying. So how do you reconcile it, my can friend? Can appear in the form of whatever He wants. So when you he say, appear, hey, okay, is God a cloud? Is God a cloud? It's got a cloud. God is not a cloud. It's got a pillar of fire. For God me, God, as a Muslim, God, God we say, "Laisa kamethli ishayan." That means He's <laughs> unlike. Anything, That's fine. anything means That's fine. anything you can even imagine, anything you've seen, anything you can fathom. In the scriptures, everything in the other Torah. than that. Even even the pork abstaining, Sabbath keeping Jews yeah. believe that the Lord appeared in a form of some sort. We don't know what exactly what it is, and it, and it had a cloud-like formation. And it, and it's Again, change in nature. It doesn't mean that God has changed his essence. It means he's manifested in the form that they can receive him. That is called change in nature. You're just using semantics now. Okay? okay, okay. Whether you, look, whether you become, whether you uh, become, it's a manifestation. you become other than a human being, yes? Then you're no longer a human being. You're something else. It's a manifestation of God's glory, essence, But that's, like I said, that's just semantics. When you manifest as something else, for example, you know, the, um, uh, the Hindus and, uh, other religions they believe in reincarnation yeah, yeah. yes so they say you manifest as something else in I'm your in in your in, in your future what do you yeah, say I'm, I'm not saying that i'm saying that when you read the, 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 the torah in itself it says that the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire don't be a literalist you're shooting yourself in the foot if you keep doing that so, so, so it's, it's a metaphor I, 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 that would be better actually. I, that would be you. much I'm better. You. Yeah, yeah. When it says the pillar of, of cloud. It's a metaphor. When you say a metaphor, it means a, a figure of speech. For example, if I say you're making a mountain of, out of a molehill. Yes? When, a figure of speech when, doesn't mean taking it literally, my in, friend. In you interpret it as per in, the context. In, in Leviticus 16, where um, the Lord says to, to Aaron, the high priest, I will meet you in the pillar of cloud in between the mercy seat and the ark of the covenant i will meet you in the pillar of cloud that's a location so that's fine that no, can no, be literal no, no. that can be literal if yeah. it's a location it it's can a be location, literal but he says i will take on the form of the cloud and i will speak to you ah take the form of a cloud why not isn't that it's a change in nature? Change. Unless you're telling me God is now cloud. Come on. Come on. I'm not saying 
code is a curse? Well, you can't have it both ways. Oh, okay. When you say manifest, oh, wait a minute. Saying is incorrect. What, what do you understand by the term manifest? Oh, okay. Means you become from. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. You become from okay, yeah, okay. from uh, from A to okay. B, from okay. one nature okay. to another nature, okay. from one form to another form. There is a change. Change of what? Form, not a change in nature. Okay, so you're telling me God is in the form of a cloud. God appeared in a form. Is the nature of the cloud the same as that of God Almighty? Absolutely. Did you say absolutely? The, the, the nature of the one, cloud the one, is the same as the God Almighty. The take it on the form of the pillar of fire and the pillar of cloud, wherever it is that went in front of the Israelites as they were moving through the, the wilderness period, which is just basic um, um, Torah teaching. Why can't it be a sign? Why can't the cloud, why can't the cloud be a sign from God? And we can call it yes? a sign, it's fine. Exactly. Why are you saying that is the nature manifesting as a cloud? Okay. I mean, that's that's literally. Okay, yeah, let's, let's move on. Another point I would like to bring up from the New Testament is this. I mean, do you believe that... Uh, Jesus Christ yeah. worship God. Yes, in his, in, his, in, his, in his physical flesh. Good. In his physical in the form. Physical flesh of Christ, who was the servant who was prophesied in, in Isaiah. Yeah. The suffering servant who came down, worshipped the God of Israel as an example right. to the rest of the nation. Yes, go, 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 go. Would, would you say he's the best example in terms of his worship? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Would you say he would he wouldn't worship a false god? No, no. Would you say he would only worship the true God? And he, not only would he not worship a false god, he would not affirm a false god. Absolutely. Okay. And I totally agree with that. As Isa alayhi salam, or Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, yeah. yes, is someone who is a servant of God, like you correctly said. Yes. He became a servant. Well, he became a servant means he's a servant, right? And who was his master when he became a servant? Uh, his father. His father. His God, right? Do you believe that is his God? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in, his, in his flesh, yeah. Okay, when Jesus was human, yeah. in his flesh, as you said, yeah. yes. What made the distinction? No, no, no. Whom did he worship? The one true God of Israel. And who is that? So the one true God of Israel. The only true God, actually. The only true God of Israel. Yeah. Who he was glorified with in, in, in eternity. He was his father from all, from all eternity. Yeah. He's the one for whom he um, so it's, came in. So his father is the one he worship, right? Yeah. His God and his father. And like one. Peter says, one Peter, his God, his father and his God. Yeah. So, okay? So, so the Why? physical flesh yeah. that Jesus Christ took on, which right. was real flesh, real flesh. And I know he's a human. Yeah. That's simple as that. Keep it simple, my yeah. friend. No need to complicate. Who is Jesus Christ? Yeah. Worship the God of Islam. Right. Whom do you worship as, the, as God? The God of Israel. Right, so only the Father, yes? I worship the God of Israel. Only the Father? <laughs> no, because Jesus Christ is the God of Israel in human flesh. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. Let me get this right. So Jesus <laughs> Christ... I need, I need to, I need to yeah, yeah, backtrack that. and then rethink. Well, I need, I need to, right, um, so my question once again is, whom do you worship? I already asked you whom Jesus worship and you confirm is only the Father, Absolutely. right? Whom do you worship as so, God Almighty? So as a Christian, I believe that Jesus Christ as pertains to 1 John 1 1 in the beginning was the word the word yeah. was God the word was God and then 1 John 14 all things were created through him and the word became flesh I just asked you who, whom do you worship? I'm just the <laughs> okay I worship the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit the right so you don't worship what Jesus worshipped you worship something additional to that I worship the Father and Jesus Christ. Only two? Well, because, because from my conception or understanding... Are you a Benetarian? The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God, is equal. For my conception of... So you don't believe Holy Spirit is a third person? I do believe it, no problem. So let's keep it simple then. <laughs> okay, so... Why is that only two? This is only I'm just curious, that's all. see, there's a kind of like a crowd that's... Um, um, uh, uh, are you out. nervous? A little bit. That's fine. This guy's a warrior. I, 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 I'm, I'm like, I'm battling. You're, you're, you're doing quite well, actually. I would I'm say you're, you're, you're doing quite well. One thing I do like, though, other than the literal so, interpretations. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm saying is, I believe that Jesus Christ. All I'm asking you is that if you believe that yeah. Jesus Christ is the best role model, yeah. the best person that will teach you how 
whom to worship as a true God, why do you then go against the teaching of Jesus Christ? Because Jesus Christ is the word of God himself manifesting in you. No, I'm not, I'm not asking about the nature of Jesus Christ. Yeah, I'm just asking you, I, I'm not asking about the nature of Jesus Christ. That comes later on. First, I'm asking you whether you follow Jesus Christ in his footsteps in terms of whom he worshipped. Yeah. It seems like you don't because you added two extra entities in addition to the Father. I disagree with that. No, no, you. When I say you, means you yourself claim I, I that know. you worship the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Am I right? Correct yeah, me if I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you... But the Son is the Word. In... Regardless, we, we can go with those semantics later on. <laughs> first, first, the three persons of the Trinity, okay. the, I, I'll use the term Trinity. Is that okay with you? Okay. Yeah, just for the brevity of this discussion. So the triune God is what you recognize as God. Jesus Christ recognized as a Unitarian God. So Trinitarian God is what you worship. Unitarian God is what Jesus worships. Why is there a discrepancy in what Jesus worship and what he taught people to worship and what he taught people to pray to? Why is there a clear discrepancy? I think you follow the church, not Jesus Christ. Because the church came up with this Trinity doctrine in the 4th century. So, for me, I, we, we can say Trinity and that's fine. But yeah. in the earliest documents, Jesus Christ is declared to be God. Period. Earliest the documents. Earliest documents which are made to the New Testament scriptures. Give me one scripture in the New Testament where Jesus claims to be God. Or even the Old, doesn't matter. Where Jesus claims to be God, gone. One scripture where Jesus explicitly, unequivocally states that He is God Almighty. How can God worship God? I mean, he already said, Jesus worshiped the Father, God. And now you're saying he's God. Make up your mind. So, I had this conversation for two hours with um, Adnan. Yeah. Recently. How long did I take? Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Adnan, mashallah. May Allah, may Allah give him jazakhar. So but he's, mashallah, quite good as well. On old ground, but I think fundamentally, what it comes down to is number one the purpose of what Jesus came for. His initial mission was not to be um, glorified and honored, it was him to it was for him to glorify and honor his father. Jesus Christ declares himself to be God in um, eight for, 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 say, I'm sure, John eight verse fifty four? Fifty eight. Sorry, 58, so yeah, you know, before Abraham was, I am. But that's, he's not declaring his God. And that's fine, that's an interpretation, no problem. Exactly. Give me explicit words. Oh, 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 over the course of the New Testament, honor me the way you, uh, so he, he goes, oh, I'm trying to find a verse. There's, there's a verse where he says, so that every man may honor the son, just as they honor the father. Yeah, honoring means respect. Jesus Christ says, believe in God, also believe in me. Yeah. Um, so these are all interpretations. They are not explicit. That's, fine, that's, that's why I said yeah. even one. Okay, you got how many books in the New Testament? Twenty-three, twenty-four. I don't know. Twenty-three. Yeah. You you haven't got a single passage which claims that Jesus is Almighty God. Even Alpha Omega is an interpretation. Then you'll be worshiping Melchizedek, who said he has no beginning of days, no end of time. Would you worship Melchizedek as God? Okay, so we're not, we're not going to get too far here. You are not, because Jesus himself, he, he refutes all the Trinitarians. You know, Jesus himself refutes any Trinitarian who claims that God is the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. Because if that was the case, then Jesus would have, Jesus would have uh, taught his disciples, his apostles and his, uh, the people who he was teaching. What does the Bible say in John 1, 14? Yes, where he says, uh, sorry, John 14, where he says, uh, if you love me, follow my commandments, follow my teaching. Yes, John 14, 24, I believe, yeah? Now, if Jesus is teaching you clearly the only true God is the Father, yeah. in uh, um, uh, John 17, 3, quote, quote, an explicit quote, quote, statement. Quote, quote, quote the rest of the... Yeah, quote it, doesn't matter. Quote 17, 5. 17, 5, we'll come to that, no problem. Even if you quote 17, 5, it still, <laughs> it still doesn't change John 17, 3. He still explicitly states that the only true God is the Father. So, do you also accept that He, Jesus Christ, pre-existed? Actually, that doesn't mean He pre-existed. I'll tell you. I'll tell you how. If Jesus, <laughs> let me ask you this: Can God lose His glory? This is this is this is and this is, this is the issue and this is the problem. You keep saying what God can and can't do. No, no, what, I keep saying what, based on what God what said. what standard do you use to say... The scripture. God can't, God can't the scripture. Can't yeah, exactly. The so, scripture says so, God is immortal. Yes. You say he died on the cross for three days and three I'm nights. You're saying the physical flesh of Christ died on the cross. Well, the person died, right? Yeah. The person died. Is the person immortal? Is the person, can you pierce the spirit? Say again? Can you pierce the spirit? Can you pierce... The Bible says God is spirit. Can you pierce the spirit? Oh, can you pierce your spirit? Can, of course you can't. 
Spirit. Can you pay us my spirit? Oh, so we both are immortal. Uh, sorry. <laughs> By your definition. I'm saying that. Doesn't mean you're mortal. No, but this, this is what I'm saying. So if you hold on, you know hold the hold wait a minute. You on. need to understand let's, let's one go, thing. Let's go the spirit no. or sorry, the soul that we have is something that God created as immortal. Absolutely. But but we but we we experience the first death. Yeah. The only death we yeah. experience is this yeah. in this world. Did Jesus experience that death? Yes, for the sake of all of us. I didn't ask you why. Did he experience that death? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Did the Father experience that death? No, no. So who is immortal? And not, and, not only, and not only did the Father not experience the death, the Word of God did not experience the death of the cross. So who died for you on the sin then? From the three? The servant, the man, Jesus Christ. Is he part of the uh, Trinity? The physical flesh of Jesus Christ. Is, is the man who died for you part of the Trinity? The physical flesh of Jesus Christ is created. His essence was, was the Word of God. His essence was okay. So is the physical flesh which is created by no, God, no. is that part of the Trinity? So whoever died for you, for you, which is the flesh, is not part of the Trinity anyway. You see what I mean? No one from the Trinity died for you. The person, you know why the Christians always say the flesh died? In fact, they are telling me, wait, wait, in fact, you are just telling me that death occurred here. Yeah, yes, death took place here. Absolutely. Okay, death, what does that mean? The death of the body of Christ, which was a created. Well, how do you how do you define that? The separation of the soul from the spirit. Very good. The soul from the body. Yes. Does that happen for you when you're going to die? Absolutely. Does it happen for me when I die? Did it happen to Jesus Christ when he died? Good. Did it happen for the Father? No. Look. So from all the four examples I gave you, who is the only one who is truly immortal? Who never ever dies. Jesus Christ. No, Jesus died. <laughs> he died on the cross. He said it himself. I asked you, did he die? I mean cheeky. No, 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 but it's a, it's why you're confused is because no, no, you have not, made up your mind that Jesus is immortal, even though the whole idea of the crucifixion is for him to die. I'm not confused at all. And do you know why? Okay, let me ask you this. If someone is no, 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 no. do you know why I'm not confused? Because actually you are, because I asked you from the four who's truly immortal, you said Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is immortal. You didn't even say the father. What I'm saying is this, okay? Because these, arg these arguments are good. Yeah, even the Holy Spirit didn't say. I appreciate say. that, but what I'm saying, what I'm, what I'm, I, I, I know I haven't come across as well as I wanted to. No problem. Sorry, which was? I might help you. If we look at Philippians uh, two verse five. Yeah, two six. Two, two six. Yeah. Yeah. Who was in? The, who was in the very form of God Himself? Yeah. But He emptied Himself of His glory. Yeah. And took on the form of the servant. So God, He, he did it. You're saying, you're saying, can God do it? The Bible says He did. Okay. First and foremost, first and foremost, when He says in the form, means the image of God. Yeah. Yes. Was Adam in the image of God in Genesis 1 to 27? Not in the same way that Jesus was. How do you know not in the same way? It says exactly the same thing. Not in the same way. God created man in his image. No. Very clearly no, 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 in Genesis. No, 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 no. Genesis 1, 26 or 27. In the very form. It doesn't say image, it says form. Form and image God, are synonymous. God himself. Form and image. The Bible says the whole universe my friend, was created through Jesus Christ. Form and image are similar. They are same. The Bible says that all things were created through Jesus Christ. True. So not by, through. The Bible says the word of the, by, by the word of the Lord the heavens were made. Okay. By Look, the word, even if you, Jesus. you know, <laughs> even if you bring up all these statements, yeah. yes? Who is the ultimate God of Jesus? His Father. The God so, of Jesus is physical flesh because Jesus Christ no, no, whoa, whoa, whoa. is God. No, no. If Jesus is worshipping the physical body of Christ. How many persons is Jesus? God. One. Good. So why are you separating Jesus. him into flesh and uh, divine? Because we have to. No, that's a the word. when you do when you divide when you separate the natures of uncreated wait, wait. became flesh. When you separate and, and the flesh and divine nature of Jesus, that is a heresy. Think about this because you cannot you know you as a person you have many natures. You might be kind, you might be generous, yes, you might be passionate. These are your natures, but how many persons are you? You're still one person. One, yeah. So when some when Samson will die, what will people say? Did the nature died or did they, will they say the person died? So similarly in the case of Jesus is the person who died. So the Bible says, I know I, I know Muslims don't believe this. Believe what? The Bible says that God is spirit. Say again? God is spirit. God is spirit. God, God is spirit. No, no, but even if you maintain, you I don't know. I don't, I because to me, no, no, I'll tell you why I don't believe it. We believe the spirit is a creation of Allah. And Allah is unlike his creation. You see what I mean? That's the that's reason. So we don't, when Allah says unlike the creation, it means everything, including the spirit. Including the angels. Okay. Including the soul, spirit, everything. All these so things the are creations of Allah. God is the Bible says God is spirit. And that spirit was uncreated. 
he's, he's the uncreated spirit here. Yeah? And that spirit itself... Sorry, is it okay if you move your sorry, because sorry, sorry. I'm getting background. The spirit, the word of God, his essence came, became a human being. Okay, let's go back to whom Jesus worshipped. No, because we are going in circles here. We are going in circles about the flesh and the spirit and the body and all that. To me, it's one person. Did that person die? The second person of the Trinity? Yes or no? The body of Christ. Person. I'm asking the person. Not his nature. You always go to the nature. Did the person? Did the person die? to make a delineation. No, but you also, as a person, your body dies and your soul lives on. Okay, same like Jesus. So it's no different to him. Person of Christ. The part that could be pierced because. The spirit part of Jesus Just like Christ. you, my friend. Hold on Just like you. You're no different. The eternal word, which, which is... Your God. soul is also immortal. It won't die. It's not eternal. Okay, it's not, it doesn't cease to exist. It's not eternal. Okay? It's not eternal. I didn't say eternal, I said immortal. Yeah, yeah. Listen. The reason I said immortal is because your soul yeah. is also created immortal. It will not cease to exist. Yes? So depending on God's judgment, it will be eternal bliss or eternal damnation. We leave that to the judgment of, of God Almighty. However, if you keep saying the flesh died, his soul, his spirit did not die, then you are the same. You are in the same situation. Your, soul, your body dies, your soul lives on. You see what I mean? It doesn't make you immortal, my friend. Yes, your soul is immortal, but as a person, you are mortal. Just like I am mortal. And that's the reason in 1 Timothy 6.16, God doesn't say, yes, that there are many who are immortal. God says there is only He alone is immortal. In 1 Timothy 6.16, He alone. What does the term, if I say, you alone are holding a bottle of water, yes? That means nobody else is holding it. You see what I mean? We have to. Same and in the same book, it says in, in 3, Timothy, 3 Timothy verse 16, it says, God manifested in the flesh. Well, that's a change in nature then. <laughs> that's a change. No and, problem? And now God can do that if He wants to. Well, it goes against, it goes against Malachi 3.6. God of Israel can do whatever He wants. No, He can't. Can He? Can he see? The God of Israel. Man, it says it explicitly. Okay, can the God of. Let me ask you this. Can the God of Israel create another God? He can do anything, right? <laughs> what happened? I love, I, love these, I, love, I love these questions because they're so well structured. Bro, these are the contradictions you will come across when you talk to atheists even. No, no, Not only the Muslims. Because even the atheists will bring up this point. Because if you're going to why? use logic, which you were using earlier... Do you know why God can't create another God? Because it's but you said he can do anything. Do you know why God cannot create another God? Yeah. Because eternality is an actual attribute of God. And if the being was created, then it cannot be God. Okay, immortality is also the attribute of God. No, but God, we, we, we receive... Omniscience is also the attribute of God. We receive immortality. So for, for a being to be truly God, it would have to be self-existent. And that created God would, would be contingent on the God of Israel or the God of the, God, the, God of the universe. No, no, but immortality is also an attribute of God. But according to you, one of the persons of the Trinity died for you. Yeah. In his physical flesh, but his, but his, his essential essence. Did the person is die? That's all I'm asking. Did, did, did Let's use the term "person." Did the person die? Yes or no? Jesus Christ, the person in his in his, in his physical flesh, died. Yes, yes. Okay. And there's no issue. Let me ask you this. And, and that, when Jesus, and that is not a logical question. Wait, wait. Like, when Jesus was, let me let me ask you this. When Jesus was eating food, yeah. yes, it you're going to say body, it was his physical body. And not only but when Jesus, Jesus, when Jesus actually does miracles, yep. what will you say? No, no, the Holy That's Spirit, not his physical. The Holy Spirit enabled him to do miracles. Oh, he can't do it himself? No, no, Jesus did Christ did not do a single miracle by his own power. He so it. he's contingent on someone else? His physical flesh, we're talking about the Your, whole, your, your principle, no, no, wait a minute. Your principle of contingency applies to him here. Jesus Christ says it himself, I, I, have, I have myself can do nothing as the Father. Nothing, yeah. Yeah. wow. In his physical flesh. This is it. Listen, everything we're quoting were, were words spoken by a human being who walked around. He was walking around, he was talking, he was communicating. How do you interpret the transfiguration of Christ, Matthew 17? What's your interpretation? What's your understanding of that? You tell me. I'm asking you. You tell me. Transfiguration, look, all this... Because for me, Jesus is a human being. I'm asking, what's your Jesus is a human being for me. That's all it is. I don't believe that even. I don't actually believe that. The transfiguration, the death, for me, the death of Jesus didn't happen. It doesn't, it doesn't matter if you believe it or not, because we can move, we can move in. What, one thing I want to talk about, I want to talk about the death of Jesus Christ. 
in a second. Actually, we were talking about the worship of Jesus yeah, Christ, yeah. and and no, you no, wait, wait, you you contradicted Jesus's teaching by saying that you worship a Trinity. Jesus worships only a Unitarian God. You see what I mean? Okay, so why would you actually? This is, this is the issue. Okay, I think you don't love Jesus because if you loved him, based on John 14, 24, if you love Jesus, you would follow his teachings. And his teachings came through the apostles as well, which was authoritative. And we, and we can yeah. Trust what did he teach? And they declared what did he teach unequivocally the, what? that the whole universe was created by Jesus Christ. No, no, through. You said earlier, through. There's a big difference by and through. By his power. No, 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 it wasn't. You just said he cannot do anything by himself. You're contradicting yourself again. Physical humanity. Oh, so you're saying when he... How, be how, how, could, how could the universe have been created by Jesus Christ if he was born in, 2000, in the year 2000? Sorry, I'm sorry, 2000 years ago. No, no, when you say God gave him the ability... I never said that. You said Holy Spirit. Said, Is Holy Spirit not God for you? Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Because we're, we're mixing things now. Yeah, go on. So, God gave the human being... Jesus Christ, the man in his physical flesh, who was the word of God made flesh, the ability to do miracles. Okay. okay. In the Bible, it also says that that's God the Father that's created... One point. That's one point. That the Father, God the Father is a creator, yes? So who is the creator, second the Father point, or the second, Son? Second point is this. Second point is this. Yeah. Right? In the Bible, it says that by the word of the Lord, God created things through his word, who is Jesus, yeah. before he became a man. For, when you say through, look, even before he became a man, became yes, even before he became a man, when he says God created through Jesus, yes, so who's the actual creator? So all things that came He's into God. existence, all things that came into existence, yes, were created through the word of God. By whom? His word. Yeah, through him, by? His word. Wait, wait. Through, G, through the word, by? By the Spirit. Which spirit? God Almighty, right? Yeah, there you go. So the ultimate creator is God Almighty, not Jesus. Jesus Christ. Yes. Now let me ask you this. You know, in the Jesus Christ, wait, is God manifest in flesh. If you're going to believe that, then let me ask you this: Why does after the ascension of Jesus, yes. does he say the head of Christ is God? Because Christ, the physical. No, no, no. This is after his ascension. Because Christ, the Anointed One, the Messiah, was 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 um, exalted to the right hand of God the Father. But when he says the head of Christ is God, yeah, which God, which God is that? Because Christ is the anointed one, the man, Christ Jesus, has been exalted to the right hand of God, the physical body. Yeah, so who is his, war, who is his head, exalted. which God is his head? Himself, his father, his father, his father, they're one, they're yeah. one, they're united. So when, does God have a head? Does God have a boss? Okay, okay. So <laughs> this is this, this is where this and this is where this is where there's nuance. There's, there is there is there is okay. Nuance. I want to hear the nuance. What's the nuance? There's nuance because when we're speaking about Jesus Christ, the person, yeah, he is the Word of God wearing human flesh, made flesh. So there is a there is a unity. I'm asking. And there's a duality. Post ascension. He still he's still wearing that body. The Word of God is going to be wearing the body forever. Okay. So is that body of his part of the Trinity? It's glorified. Is it part of the Trinity? Not in essence. Not in essence. Not in essence. So okay. God has one essence, right? God has one essence. Right. So you're telling me part of Jesus, which is divine, yeah. is part of the Trinity. It's been glorified. You know, this is where you're separating the it's natures. It's been it's been wait, wait, wait. Even if it's glorified, is the glorified body of Jesus, does it reside inside the Godhead or outside? It receives. No, no. Does it reside inside the Godhead or outside? How do you perceive it? Maybe Ben can help you with that answer. No, no, no Ben? No, no, no. Come on, you had one debate? That's enough? No, it's no not an issue because... In a few weeks. It, in a few weeks, The Godhead no problem. is eternal. The Godhead is, 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 is eternal. And currently... I see, I see Godhead as one essence. I, I agree. Yeah? I agree. So this one essence, which is divine, does it include the person, the second person of the Trinity or not? Yes, in the sense... Don't yeah. separate the natures now. No, 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 no. Do not separate the natures. <laughs> Maybe Ben can tell us which uh, which heresy is that where you separate the natures? Nestorianism. 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 Actually, that's two persons, isn't it? Nestorianism. Yeah, yeah. So do not do that. Do not fall into heresy. This is not heresy. It is a heresy. Is. If you're going to separate his natures... It's not heresy to say that the, the, the physical body of Christ that was created 2,000 years ago is not the eternal God who created the universe. No one is saying, wait, we're saying wait, the wait. God who created the
said his glorified body wait but you said his glorified body will be with him forever forever good forever. so forever he, means he will be he will so that's what i'm asking you yeah. now that he has ascended yeah. does he have a glorified body absolutely is that glorified body in the second person with the second person of the trinity yes, yes, good yes. is the second person of the trinity part of the godhead yes good yeah. now when you talk about the godhead is the father the son and the holy spirit that constitutes the trinity right yeah, yeah. is the second person of the trinity's glorified human body within the godhead what's yeah. this now <laughs> without a heresy i want you to answer that okay I'm going to say yes. Don't choke on it. <laughs> yes. Yes or no? Because the the second person of the Trinity is wearing that body. So yes. Good. So what do you have just stated there? <laughs> think, do you want to think about it? No, 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 no. Okay, what do you have just stated that? But the essential essence of God is not changed. No, no, wait, wait. What do you have just said that is the God had consists of a human nature. The second person of the Trinity is wearing I know that's why I asked you is it part of the nature is, sorry is it part of the godhead yes in the sense that the word who is part of the godhead is wearing that body no no i'm not saying is divine that's nature changed look uh, okay, don't get me yeah, wrong yeah, yeah, I'm not so saying that. i'm saying the okay, divine okay, look okay, okay, yes, the divine nature yes, of the yes, father yes, the yes. son and the holy spirit is inside the godhead absolutely that is something you already agree yes. you wouldn't have a dispute yes. i'm asking the additional quite, nature quite, quite, the additional created nature of yeah. jesus christ has been, has, yes has during been the uh, during the incarnation yeah. is that also part of the triune godhead or not yes and i said before in the sense that the uncreated word of god is wearing inhabiting that body yes will wear it forever so it is a part of the yes. godhead right and why and why right so i'm going to take a step back why as evidence for the redemption of all of our souls for all eternity. So every time anyone looks at Jesus Christ in heaven, his body says, you deserve to be here because I died for you. That's the reason why. Good. So in other words, you're telling me this essence of God, by the way, which includes all the natures, yes? Yeah. Includes a human nature as well. The fullness of the Godhead was dwelling in the body of Jesus Christ. Now you tell me how is that, <laughs> how is that not a change in nature? <laughs> Remember this, the essence of God, which was only divine at, before incarnation, in post incarnation, nation it now includes a human nation how is that not a change in nation like i said you're you're stuck between a rock and a hard place now once again these are these are different concepts different concepts no, difficult concepts, That's okay. difficult can, concepts can yes keep it simple like the tawhid so, one god one <laughs> one god, one god, one god who has who has 99 names and attributes and that one yes however it's still one god we do not say it's uh, divisible like person a sorry person one two and three and then he takes on a human nature which is a created nature god and that ultimately becomes part of the godhead no which is the fullness of god no what do you mean no problem you have a weakness in the god now do you not realize that a human nature so Christ, which has which is own which is own creation was able to kill him no but you, what, what you got to realize is the glorified jesus christ is all powerful um, he, 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 if he was all powerful he wouldn't have died by his own creation the glorified christ even in the glorified Jesus okay Christ. so the glorified god the, the, the jesus that john the apostle saw and yeah. fell to the ground like a dead man because he had all power let me ask you this jesus is the glorified. is the glorified jesus does, sorry said, <laughs> the, the, does the glorified jesus have a god the physical he always has a physical we know that no need to bring that up all the time does he have a god in, in, in the first book, Corinthians, in the book of Revelation, first Corinthians, in the book of Revelation, chapter eleven, in the book of verse number three. In the book of Revelation, it says it as well. Okay. Can, okay. Now my, now my, my let's wrap this up. I think we are, we probably have dealt with most of the key topics. So, if the glorified Jesus yeah. has a God, wait, wait. If the glorified God has a God, how many gods are there? One. Which one? Jesus or the one or is God? He's simply declaring the truth that like the Father is God and He's God. In, in Hebrews it says. So it's two gods then. In, Hebrew, in Hebrews it says it literally says the Father declares He's God in Hebrews. No, the Father we know is God Almighty, yeah, and, and according the, to the Bible. And in Hebrews, the Father calls Jesus Christ God. Oh, in Hebrews one eight. Yeah. Have you read one nine? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go read it. And God, your God has existed. exactly. So and God, wait a minute. Your God. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. You know the term. Wait a minute. The term God is not is not Almighty God all the time. You know. 
know that, right? We, we, uh, uh, um, I, I went into this. I yes. Into this. So if you look at uh, Psalm 82 6, God Himself calls Himself the calls the Israelites. Yes. You you are God's the sons of the Most yeah, High. So the two the, the two the two the two what is the phrases? You are God and you are sons of the Most High. Both of them be, have been used for Jesus and, same and the Israelites. He says, when the Most High brought the firstborn into the world, he commanded all the angels of God to worship him. The Bible says explicitly. Who is the firstborn? Jesus Christ. Meaning. Have you read Exodus 4.22? Exodus. Oh, is, 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 is the first one. Okay. <laughs> they come can't on, win. The whole Bible come is full on, of contradictions. Come on, come on. That is not a contradiction. I don't know what you do. Oh, wait, wait. What does Exodus 4.22 say? <laughs> The it's, first it's, begotten it's, yeah, it's, of God is Israel. Now, who's the firstborn? Jesus or Israel? Who is Israel, by the way? Who is Israel? Israel. Israel, yeah. Jacob, Jacob's name. Sorry, Israel was. It's not a contradiction. It's not a contradiction? I have to, I have to make that clear. Okay, so make up your mind. Who's the first, who's the first begotten? Israel or Jesus? I, just, I, 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 love, I love your questioning. It's just like it's very, it's, it's very sharp. It's, it's good. Actually, from a Bible, my friend, and that's the reason yes, Allah yes. Subhanahu wa Taala says about the Quran that if this contradiction what, is not what, from God, so what is the teller when you have many contradictions? That the Bible is not from God because it's been tempered with over the years. We are not saying there's no truth at all in it. Of course, there is truth in it. However, it has been tempered over the years. So what it was at one time, uh, a, a book from God, the Torah and the Injil, they have been corrupted over the years yeah. because they were meant for a certain yeah. period, a certain time. Nowhere will you find in the Torah or in the uh, uh, New Testament, in the Old Testament or the New Testament, a statement like that in the Quran, where Allah says that um, uh, that He, inna uh, nahnu nazzalna dhikr, that it is indeed we who have actually revealed the dhikr, the Quran, wa inna lahu lahafidun, and it is indeed we who will preserve it or who will safeguard it. Problem, you don't have this, this guarantee of preservation in the previous scriptures. And that is the reason we know that they were not meant for all eternity. Sorry, they were not meant for all as time. As far as preservation, I don't want to go into that because I think it's, it's, it's about my pay grade in terms of, in terms of um, the level of scholarly... No, no, I'm just talking about the contradictions, not even about the so textual what, what, criticism. What I want to talk about is this, okay? Yeah. I may not have argued as, as well as I want, but it's fine we're having a night. I've actually quite enjoyed this chat. Yeah, I have as well. So yeah. it's, it's quite nice because I've seen you in action quite a lot and I, I, I have an understanding of how you operate, which is fine. Alhamdulillah. Let's talk about the fact that the Quran contains a historical error. Like? Okay. All of history. Oh, you're with the crucifixion? All of history, all yeah. of the scholars. Did Adnan actually but deal with that it, topic? But, he did, he did. So but, why are you bringing that up again? No way, you want my view? Okay, okay, go on. Bart Ehrman, the scholar that everybody doesn't like in yeah. Christianity. I think Bart Ehrman is actually quite interesting. Even he declares, E.P. Saunders, it's a historical fact that the man Jesus Christ, whether you believe he was God or not, yeah. died on the cross. You know what that is called? It's called the fallacy of appealing to authority. That's what you're doing. Just because Bart Ehrman said and E.P. Saunders says, then you must, then it must be the Okay, give me evidence from history, from the first century, which states that Jesus was crucified. Any history, gone. Even from outside the Bible, I don't care. Where's the, where's the manuscript for that? Have you got a first century manuscript? <laughs> no, no, I'm not saying on your own. <laughs> Where in the world can I find it? Yeah, okay. Which library? Yeah, which? The first century. It's not from the first century. Okay, okay. You don't have a single manuscript of your New Testament from the first century. And yeah, by the way, speaking... Be, be closer, be closer. By the way, you know, speaking of Bart Ehrman, you know what he says about your Bible? It's corrupt. You know how much? No, no, not about the corruption. He says majority of the Bible, majority of the New Testament, yes? Majority of the New Testament manuscripts are from 9th century or beyond. He's, you know when he says majority, he means like 94% is from 9th century or beyond. Now you tell me, how can you actually believe in this uh, New Testament when you don't have anything from the early centuries? Nearly a millennia where, of a gap. I want to be careful because when we start diving into... Yeah, because you brought up Bart Ehrman. That's why I thought I'd quote him as well. Yeah, we have second century documents that firmly declare what? John Which? 1 1. You have second century. Second century. Are you talking about P52? Yeah. That's what John 1 <laughs> We have in the beginning, we have it. And that's. We have it. By the way, it's not. We have it. Second century. 
Seven. It's not a second oh, yeah. century. Well, see, well, it's well, actually well, late second see, or early third see, century. See, we're moving into a very complicated area that goes exactly. through my expertise. So, so I, let's I, leave I, it there. Yeah. Okay. But, so but just for your information, it's, it's late second century or early third century. Okay. The P52 um, so, fragment. It's not even a manuscript. So it's on a what fragment. basis do you de deny? Lack of evidence. Have... Lack of evidence. Lack, yeah, lack of evidence. If you cannot show me a manuscript, from an early eyewitness account, if you cannot show the gospels, me the gospels, the gospels are, I just told you, 94% are from the, beyond the, the actual gospels itself. Yeah, I'm talking about the actual gospel. <laughs> the actual gospel manuscripts are from 9th century beyond. And we have <laughs> traditions, the writings, everything. What? Bring me something from the first century. Anything, please. You, you've made a, you made a huge error now. Which error? If you, you can said, bring me a manuscript from the first the century. Are from the 9th century. No, I said manuscripts which the gospel. Zion. Fourth century Bibles, man. Yeah. Full Bibles. Yeah, fourth century full Bibles. Bi fourth you have extra Bibles. books in them. Do you take them? If you're talking about the uh, Codex Atticus, uh, the Shepherd of Hermes, yes, the Epistle of Barnabas, no do you think those are part of your uh, well, canonized they're, Bible? They affirm they're from what? the death of Jesus Christ. That is the key. So fourth century is your evidence. I'm not saying that. I'm just, I'm, no, <laughs> you just made a statement that we only have a ninth century. No, no, I'm saying this is what Bard Herman said. If you want to appeal to authorities, so can I. Man, it, oh, that's one of the No, no, look, if Bad Ehrman accepts the crucifixion, doesn't mean I as a Muslim. For me, no, no, I'm saying for me as a Muslim, I take the Quran statement and testimony over everything else. But you have to believe that the Quran was a book sent from God to believe that Jesus did die on the cross. Many early Christians didn't believe that. What Many about that? Early Christians didn't believe that Jesus Christ was a real flesh and blood human being. They believed that. No, we're not talking about that. We are talking about those who accepted Jesus. Yeah. They did not believe in his crucifixion. In fact, when I think there's a passage where Paul actually tells uh, these people, I don't know where he went, Corinth or somewhere, yeah. and he's telling them, he's telling them about Jesus' crucifixion. Sorry, have you have you heard about the crucifixion? And yeah, they said we haven't heard of it. Yeah, yeah, because they didn't receive <laughs> the gospel. <laughs> But they were Christians. That is not. That but they were Christians, according to him. That is that's why he's preaching to them. That is not an, even. An, that's not even an argument. Man. Okay. What is? You know, what is so important? What you just said there's a very strong. That's a straw man argument. That's not a straw man argument. It is. I'm the, saying there were. Uh, they, there were they people. Said, they said they received the, the, the gospel. Sorry, they received the preaching of John. Yeah. They didn't. They hadn't even heard of. of, of so why did John not tell them? Because John was beheaded. He was killed. Oh, you're saying those people became Christians? No. No. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. They if they became see, Christians, th that, that passage of without the crucifixion knowledge, listen, listen. That, that passage of it quoting, destroys the whole idea of crucifixion. That passage you're quoting yeah. was a verse where they asked the people, have you heard about Jesus? They said, no, we've only been baptized under the baptism of John the Baptist. So they hadn't even heard of the stuff that had happened. So Paul preached them and told them, this is everything else. And they became Christians and they were all baptized in the name of can you, Jesus. Can you imagine? That's that, what happened. Just so, imagine. So that verse wait, wait. That, just don't use that again. No, no, I'm not using it against. Okay, no wait, problem. I'm saying there were people who didn't know about it, early Christians. Of course. Because yes. They weren't Christians yet, though. They were early people who believed in the baptism of John. We're talking about. Baptism of John. We're, we're speaking about the okay. earliest centuries now, after Jesus. Yes. There the early people, centuries, okay. They weren't Christians yet. Do you know anyone from the early centuries who actually believed in the Trinity the way you do? No, because the Trinity doctrine wasn't fully developed yet. However, they all believed in the divinity of Christ, and we can, we can show that through. So, so they didn't believe the Holy Spirit was God. They were. When you read Acts, I think it's, I think it's Acts seven, yeah. or maybe Acts four, about the story of Ananias, and he says that you lied to the Holy Spirit. You haven't lied to the Spirit of man, but you lied to the Spirit of God. Yeah, but that's also lied interpretation, isn't it? Okay. That's okay. Yeah. What I'm asking. Everything's interpretation. Well, it has to be, isn't it? Otherwise, you, if you're going to believe in literal yeah. translation, <laughs> like the way you do, you'll no, start no, no, believing no. in Joel, so God right. that's that's right. Right. wrestling that's with right. a man. You know. Right. So right. what? Right. What I'm saying is that can, if can God wrestle around if he wants to. <laughs> no, no, but honestly, if you guys believe that, you'll believe anything. Said, can you, he? You'll he believe anything. To. By the way, why was Jesus go on, go on. abandoned at the cross? What do you mean? Jesus said, my God, my God, why have you abandoned he me? He was quoting Psalm 22. What does it say? Have you read it, actually? Psalm have you read Psalm 22? Go read it. My God, my God. You'll my regret this. Me. Trust me. He was, he was no, no, read it. Read it. This is what many Christians say. It's quoting Psalm 22, but they never read Psalm 22. The beginning of it, where he actually says it. No. Read it to us and tell me if that is what God would actually say. Because you believe Why Jesus you so is God. Far from helping me, 
Oh, sorry, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me? And the words of my groaning, Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not hear. And in the night season, and am not silent. But you are holy, enthroned in the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in you. They trusted in you and you delivered them. They, they, they cried to you, sorry, yeah. But I am a worm, I know man. A I'm a what? A worm. I'm a, a worm. Okay. Do you think Jesus actually believes all that? About himself? That he would cry by day and by night and God wouldn't hear him? That he's actually considered himself equal to a worm? Meaning nothing? Yes? Insignificant? Give it a break, my friend. Don't say quote is Psalm 22 next time. Because this is what happens when you don't read your scripture and you say it quoted this. I mean, Jesus is not some ordinary person that he would out of the blue just quote Psalm 22 without any meaning to it. The, the important, no, no. The important thing is this. That was what was fulfilled. That he's a worm. <laughs> that he would, that God wouldn't listen to him. No, no. But I'm asking you, would. What is fulfilled? Because what you read there, it says that God, he would actually pray to God by day and by night and he wouldn't listen to him. And he would ultimately become insignificant like a worm. Do you really see Jesus in that category? I believe that he died and he did it for us. No, I didn't ask you if he died or not. Sorry. I'm asking you, would he actually lower himself to such an extent? Becoming a human being is already lowering himself. So you're saying this Jesus, wait a minute. You're telling me Jesus, who is the son of God, would yes. pray to God and he would ignore him. <laughs> you got no way out, bro. You dig yourself no deeper in the out. hole. Yeah. The more you argue, no don't way. argue with this argument because this <laughs> argument has got no, what do you say? No escape route for you. There's no escape clause. Okay, so that's the reason I'm asking you. There are so many passages in the Bible. When Jesus is on the cross, he cries out, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. Yes, Elahi, Elahi, lama sabachthani in Aramaic. By the way, do you know what uh, the people who speak Aramaic, Aramaic would refer to God as? Tell me. Nope. Yeah. Allah. So Jesus would, would have called his God Allah. Allah. Uh, uh, this is Syria. Me, this not is really an issue. It's not really an issue. No, no, it's not an issue, but it just shows. It just shows, look, in terms of Jesus worshipping, he's a Unitarian. In terms of Jesus calling his God Allah, it's almost identical, similar to Allah, except for, um, what do you say, a vowel, which is different. When Jesus. Pray, when Jesus was teaching his disciples, who did he say to pray to? No, 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 no. The Lost Prayer. Do you remember the Lost Prayer? Yeah, to the Father. No problem. So wait, wait. If the Lost Prayer, it says, "Our Father in heaven, yeah. hallowed be Thy name." Yeah. Why did he not say, "Our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in heaven"? Okay. It's, uh, it's okay. I, 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 can't, I, can't, I, can't, I can't answer that question and tell you why. But it just shows that. But what I can it say just shows that the Trinitarians Jesus also said to, to, to yeah. the disciples, "Anything you ask me in my name, I will give to you." But Jesus Himself, He's, Jesus Himself, asked them to pray to Him in His own words. He said, "Pray to me, and I will give you anything." No, you anything you ask me in wait, my name. Anything you ask in my name. He said, "Anything you ask." Wait me. a minute. Wait. Wait a minute. <laughs> Even if it's to ask. Him. Jesus himself could not fulfill his prayer in the garden of Gethsemane when he put his forehead on the floor. How do you expect others to pray to Jesus? Okay, I think we I think we are, we are you see what I mean? Jesus when he's fully prostrated suffering servant. Yeah, and he's praying to his master and his God, and when he's praying to his God, he says Take this cup away from me. Exactly. Let it be your will be done, says, not my will. He says, but let your will be done. That's what I just said. Exactly. Yes. I did not misinterpret or, or uh, what do you say, truncate part of the verse. I gave you the exact verse as it is. Now, you have to understand. When Jesus said, take this cup away from me, it means he's, he's saying, save me from the crucifixion. Am I right? Was Jesus saved according to your narrative in the Bible? So, however, as you've established, he yeah. said initially, save me, but then he said, no, I know this is your will, I'm going to do it. Yeah. So, so all the prayers that God establishes is with the will of God as well. 
See so what I mean? So even if Jesus did not say that last bit, his prayer was still to be saved from the crucifixion. Jesus Christ was a suffering servant who came to the field. What was his main mission? To save yourself from hell. Right. So when, he, when the time came to do that, why does he pray to God to show him another way? Because he was in his weakness of his humanity. He was afraid. Did he have the Holy Ghost in him? Yes. Did he have the Son in him? With the divine nature? Yeah. Yes. He, 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 he didn't provide. He was, he was in his humanity. That so if if he was in his humanity, yeah, he if he was zero percent God, one hundred percent man, then I agree. No, no, no. But you're saying he's hundred percent God. Can you imagine this hundred percent God and hundred percent man is prostrating to his God, Almighty God, and that Almighty God did not fulfill his prayer. No, but, but, but you, of course, everything is with you, the will of the you, Father. You made you made you made an error here. Though. Which error? You've said, as you said yourself, Jesus Christ could have asked God to save him, but he said, I'm, I'm still... He did, actually. He did. He did, he did. He did. But then he and said, his prayers got rejected. Then, no, no, he, three times. No, he didn't. Three times in the Garden of Gethsemane, he prayed. All three times his prayers got rejected. Because he recanted and said, by you, no, that you're Everything happens God. with God's will. So even if he did not make that statement, listen, listen. Saved, his actual prayer, his him. actual prayer was to save him from the crucifixion. Did that get fulfilled or rejected? I'm not asking you by whose will. Phrase, All I'm asking no, 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 you is... You phrase that the wrong way. What do you mean? Because the full prayer is, but let your will be done. But everything is with God's will. We know that already. Yeah. So, his will did not get fulfilled, and his prayers didn't get fulfilled. Double whammy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Here's, here's what Whether you like it or not, that's the fact. Here's what I would say. Yes. In general. Yes. Start Hashim is a very prepared individual. I, 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 didn't, I, didn't, come I didn't come prepared here. Yeah. I didn't even know if I was going to meet you today. No, you're experienced though. Alhamdulillah, yes. I, I, I need to do I more, do, I I need do. To do more I'll be fair with you then. I need to, yes. I need to um, do more preparation because I feel everything you said today, some of the way, the way you phrase some of your questions seems to be strong arguments. However, if we go down into the nitty gritty, I believe that a lot of the things you claim to be contradictions aren't contradictions. And that's that, what I'd say. That's your homework. That's what I'd say. I, Do your nitty gritty. It's, it's not even that. Find out any it's, it's, it, responses to I, these arguments. I'm trying to present some of these things, but you're saying, no, I don't accept that, I don't accept that. Type of thing. No, no, it's not. Look, when you start presenting things, literally everything, yes, of course I will go based on what the scholars interpreted as. But Where there's this. Even and those are not even my scholars. I, I'm telling you, bring up, bring me evidence from the rabbis. But can you All I'm asking you is to be fair to what the Jewish people hold as yeah, so that, so that's what holy. Next time. I, I, you see what I mean? I'll, I'll so bring me a rabbi and when I say a rabbi, I mean a Jewish rabbi, not a messianic Jew or someone like that was, who was, believes in Jesus and who is a Christian the anyway. Example, the Shekinah. There was the, she the Shekinah. Yeah. What? The spirit, yeah. holy. So there's been a lot of there's been a lot of argument and disagreement amongst Jewish scholars about whether No, I'm talking about the mainstream Jews. I'm not talking about heretics amongst the Jews. No, obviously, come on. Look, would I go to the Mormons to interpret no. your Bible? Exactly. So why would you expect the same from the why don't you give the same honor to the Jewish people, to the uh, to Judaism? You know when I when I talk about from the Sunni perspective of Islam, then you wouldn't go to the Shia perspective or the Qadiani perspective or some other uh, perspective which I do not hold as being uh, orthodox, you see what I mean? So, something I will acknowledge, like, like I acknowledged uh, last week, was, or two weeks ago, whatever it was, the, the full definition of the Trinity came in the fourth century. The full definition, as in the fully fleshed out the theology. However, the divinity of. Sorry, Christ, which century? Fourth century. Fourth century, yeah. Which means starting from 300 onwards. Yeah. So. 325 the, to be exact, yeah. But however, the, oh, the, the divinity of Christ of... came straight from the first century. Say again? The divinity of Christ came, first, came immediately from the first century. Not, not according to Jesus, though. That is your other homework. Find me a passage from the Bible where Jesus claims to be Almighty God. You don't, no, no, but you don't accept them. no, no, I don't accept don't unless accept it's from Jesus. It's very clear. If Jesus says that I am God Almighty explicitly, I yes, am the Alpha and, I, and the Omega, the first and then, last. Then worship Melchizedek as well. He had no beginning of days, no end of time. Hebrews 7 3. We Go and find Hebrews. out. We give you Colossians. I give Hebrews. The, the, I give you I give you. In fact, if you want Colossians, I'll give you Colossians. The of the Godhead was dwelling in Christ. And the head of Christ. 
Christ is God. <laughs> no problem. Christ is a human being in his physical No, form. I said post ascension. The head of Christ is God. Christ is still wearing that body. Yes. According to you, he's still and wearing he's, the body. And, and that's why I asked you, is he part of the Trinity? And you said yes at the end. So there you go. The Trinity has a human nature. Because you, unless you're going to separate the natures of Jesus Christ, the person Jesus, the second person of the Trinity, which you'll become a heretic, like um, uh, Nestorianism or someone where they believe that Jesus is actually two persons. By the way, do you... Oh, no, no, I'm not saying you are. But in, you see, inadvertently, inadvertently, you are actually going into that heresy by when you separate. But at least you didn't separate the natures, and I'm glad you did that. Yes. There is Jesus Christ, the person, yes. has, 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 has a dual nature in the sense that he has... And both nature. the natures are in the Godhead. What? They're, they're, they're unified. It's called a I'm not, Yeah, I know. I'm not saying that too. <laughs> That's why, I, you know what I kept insisting? I said, keep the natures in that one person. Yeah, yeah, no do not separate it. No and the only way you can do that is by introducing the human nature in the Godhead. Which, which again is a problem because you have a Godhead which was fully divine at one point and then post-incarnation is introduced would you a human nature in it. Would you acknowledge? Yeah. If Muhammad was a false prophet... Yeah. You have to prove that. If he was... Yeah. What would you, what would you believe? I don't believe in false prophets. No, no, no. I'm That's my principle. If, if Muhammad is a false prophet, what would you believe? What would I believe? It doesn't, it doesn't automatically mean Christianity is true. It would mean that, they, what it would mean is that the crucifixion most likely probably did happen. So, oh, oh, oh. so if Muhammad sallam, was a false prophet, automatically that the crucifixion is true. Why? Means the means Why? Means the Why can't I be a Jew? Means, uh, <laughs> and reject Jesus altogether? I never, I never said you, you see what I mean? Christian, I said, but I'm saying, if the Quran... But these false, hypothetical questions are I'm, I'm, really not helping anyone. If the what if Muhammad sallam, was true? I will convert his arm to life. Yes? Oh. So why do you think he is not true prophet? Do you have any evidence for that? Okay, so this is a... This, this is a or do you want to do that no, next no, time? No, no, yeah, we, we can do that next time. Okay, but, but here's what I would say though. Let's do it next time then. Here's what I would say. Bring your evidence. Yeah. That, and I'm, when I say I evidence... Come, I come, I'll, no, no, I'll when I say evidence, I don't mean from some Islamophobic website. No, no. Bring evidence no. from Orthodox Islam. Huh? Have, have you noticed though? I, from I mainstream I, Islam. I don't ever come out with those like... Muhammad was with a... Uh, yeah, 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 I know. I don't know. And that's why I respect you for it's, that. It's not... Because that's... that's relevant. That low-level polemics is not something I enjoy either. <laughs> yeah, because... But unfortunately, we have to deal with... Here's what it comes down to. And I'm going to I'm say this. If Muhammad was truly yeah. a prophet of God, yeah. I'll become a Muslim tomorrow. Inshallah. And do you know the reason Inshallah. why? Because this is Make dua Allah gives him hidayah. This is Brother Samson. Is it Samson, yeah? Yes, Samson. Okay. This is this is not about tribalism. This is not about I'm a Muslim, you're a Christian, you're, this is about the truth. I think That's before that. you go to Muhammad. Wait, wait, but you know don't believe Muhammad is a true prophet. When you when you actually a when you respectful, respectful. Yeah, but you, you can't make that statement unless you back it up with evidence. Right now, you haven't. So let's leave it for yeah, next we, time. We can, I have reasons yeah. to say that. We can dive into that. Yeah, we can dive into that next time. But we, you you also have to, before you believe in Muhammad as a true prophet and messenger, which you should as well look into, you have to recognize that the God of Jesus, sorry, the God of Muhammad وسلم, and Jesus, peace be upon him, and Moses, and uh, Abraham, all of these never ever claim a triune God. None of them. That's fine. No, no. Okay. They, they, All they the prophets. Those exact words, no, 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 no. Even in concept. Even in concept. None of them said God manifested as a human being and we worshipped him as a, as a God Almighty. You have to bring evidence from your Bible that God manifested as three persons. Three persons. And, and people worship them as... You see, if Jesus' teaching was never to pray to God, three, a, tri a triune God, or never to worship God as a triune God, why would you even worry about what the other prophets? You bring in Abraham, but when I showed you explicit statement, you know, this is another test for sincerity. And I'm not saying this only to you, I say this to everyone. First and foremost, we have to acknowledge when we see the truth, yeah. being since we have to look at it sincerely when we see and that is where we actually understand how you actually do your research yeah. when you see an ambiguous statement yeah. and an explicit statement from the scripture which you claim to be from god yeah. then you have to actually discard the ambiguous when the explicit is there you, you know why so, so this is where you've got to be careful no no wait wait let me finish be the reason for that is when the explicit statement clearly tells you who is the only true god like John 7 in 3. And Jesus Christ says he's one with God as well. Okay, continue to go. Well, the disciples are one with God as well. He asks them to be one. 
Sorry? You asked them to be one. Who asked? Jesus Christ prays that they become one. Yeah, and did they become one? Another prayer of Jesus rejected? <laughs> You see how it goes against him, everything he I says? Love, I love the way he says it, man. This is so beautiful. Okay. I'm going to watch his video. And I'm Inshallah, gonna you're going to enjoy that. It is for sure. Take notes. So what I'm saying is this. If Jesus is going to share... And yeah, there's another important point. In John 17, I think 22, where he says he gives his glory, the God-given glory. To Jesus. Yes? Yeah. No, no. I'm saying God... Jesus gives his God-given glory to the disciples to the apostles yes do they become god no so why in john 17 5 when he asked god for his glory that was with him before why does he become god jesus christ didn't become god he was god That's so what the difference so can a god can god lose his glory so <laughs> okay okay so we need to be very careful right? yes please <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. It's not because we, we, we've got to, it's, it's gymnastics. We've got it's logical to, word gymnastics. All this gymnastics. At a time. You've got to be careful. This is this is one thing I've tried to do today. Like I've tried my best to, to talk about stuff that I know. That, but okay. So what I'm saying is, which is a wise thing said, to do? Can actually. God lose His glory? No. So why is Jesus asking Jesus God? Christ to? in His essence, in His in His humanity. However, wait, wait, wait. Say again. Say again. Finish that. Finish the statement. <laughs> Jesus Christ in his essence. Because you know, he, I think he's thinking about it, but then he stops. Yeah, yeah. The reason he's told is because if he says in his essence, okay. his essence includes fully God. Hold, hold, Remember that. Hold, 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 and then this fully God speaking, when he speaks, he, by the way, is he speaking as God or as only man now? <laughs> I love it. Okay. Because you know, when you go to John 17, 5 and you claim that this is the reason Jesus is God, and many Christians do that, yes? Then you have to actually take into account that if Jesus' glory is lost, then how is he even God? God doesn't lose his glory. And then John 17, 22, he gives his God-given glory. You know where the mistake is? Because people think that God gave his divine glory to Jesus. No, in John 17, 5, it never says God gave his glory to Jesus. God, he shared his glory with God. That doesn't mean that his God-given glory is the one that he shared. God gives Jesus glory like he gives glory and honor to all the prophets who are chosen by him. Yes? It says in um, 1 Corinthians, sorry, first, yeah, 1 Corinthians 11, that man was created in the image and glory of God. Do you believe that? Yeah. Similarly, Jesus is a man. No. So he's also in the image and glory of God. You all are in the image and glory of God, according to the it, 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 1 it, it, Corinthians 11. Here's what I'd say. Revelation 5. Yeah, go on. Revelation By the way, finish your thought. You huh? stopped. Yeah, sorry. Finish your thought. Saying, um, you were saying in his essence, does he lose his glory? Yes or no? No, no. So Philippians um, 2 verse 5 says that he emptied himself. Emptied what? He empty, emptied what? He emptied, he emptied himself of, of, of? Of, of his eternal glory and some level. Thank you. So he lost his glory. <laughs> <laughs> you said it by yourself. Thanks for the scripture. You see, every scripture it brings is against him. Because in, in, in Philippians 2, this is the most quoted verse by the Christian, by the Trinitarian, to show how you can reconcile a human being, Jesus Christ, and God. Because it says he emptied himself. What does he empty himself of? Of what? You know what? Divinity. In the, the, Divinity, yes. Absolutely That's not. why he becomes lower than the angels. How can you become lower than the angels if you're still God? <laughs> the only way you can do that is when he empties his divinity. And that is what he emptied. And they will never acknowledge that because the only way it makes sense, the passage, and it's, if you, you know what they do? They read Philippians 2 up to 8. They only read up to 8. But if you look at verse number 9, like it's, if you look at verse 9, it says God will, God will exalt his name. Who's God? Jesus is God will exalt his name so philippians 2 when he says in the in the image or in the form of god has got nothing to do with him being god it just says is in the image and glory of god just like in genesis 127 where he says god created man in his image and in first corinthians 11 paul actually confirms it that man is in the image and glory of god now go Trinitarians deal with that. No, I, what, what I want to say You'll be scratching your head like him. I was laughing because I think what, <laughs> he made a good point there. And it was, it, the way he presented that was so, was so like, 
was so masterful. I have to, I have to give you, I have to give you a fist bump. Man. That was a uh, Alhamdulillah. Uh, uh, Years of experience that was, that was, that was with very, lots very of Trinitarians. Very beautiful way of. Alhamdulillah. Inshallah. Verse, so anyway, I think we have uh, probably had what like a few hours now. <laughs> all, all, all <laughs> two, um, how many hours have it been? Two? One, yeah, yeah, two. yeah, nearly two hours. Two, nearly two hours. Last thing I'd say is this. Yeah. Revelation 5. Yeah. John sees a vision of Jesus Christ in heaven as the Ram. Yeah. And all of heaven are worshipping God and the Ram on the throne. Good. David was also worshipped. Doesn't make him God. They were worshipping. Yeah, yeah. The they were worshipping. The term worship is there. All the in the Old Testament. Are worshipping Jesus. Yeah, but when he says, verse. you know what, there's a term called lateral. In, in Greek, which means worship. That is not the term used there. Whenever it is used for Jesus Christ, yes, I think it's, it's called proskuneo. proskuneo, yes. So lateral is different. Yeah. I've done the homework, bro. It, it, it don't says worry. lateral in Revelation. No, no, it doesn't. Go and check <laughs> no, it. No, we'll check it. No. Only it's for the Father. Really you know why? Yeah. You know why lateral is only used for the Father? Because even Jesus in John 7 and 3 recognizes as the only true God, the Father. And he's one with the Father. So if you, if you, you can't be one with the Father, the disciples are also one with the Father. <laughs> Unless you're telling I me. And the Father are one. I and the disciples. The God. Just like. He's declared himself. He said, just like I and the Father are one, <laughs> I and the disciples are also one. Same state, same passage, sorry, no, same, he, same chapter, John 17. He says, he says it twice though. He does say it twice. But he says once or twice. It doesn't matter. It's the no, same thing, right? <laughs> context is key. Okay. Context in context. John 17 3 context. is what? Who is the only true God? The Father and he's one with the Father. Wait, wait, wait. If Jesus says the only true God is the Father, yes, and if he was one with the Father, why did he not say the only true God is the Father and the Son? No, but this is not. This context. Is, but this is not context. How, but this, is, this isn't how we do This isn't how we do it. We bro, bro, listen, listen. And we go to, to the end. Oh, yeah. You know, every time I, I use John 7 in 3, they go to verse 5. <laughs> Okay. Come on, yes. you guys know your for game. Now, for now, for and now. I know it better. For now, w w when we do talk again, though, yeah. we will talk at some point eventually. I know you kind of. Inshallah. Yeah. yeah, inshallah. By the, by the grace of God. Yeah. It was a pleasure I, I will, talking to I you and. Come, I will come this topic with is. my actual. Prepared, you know, prepared this and everything because I think we'll, we'll, we'll have a better discussion there. Yeah, yeah. take your time. Now, it's like I'm, I'm, I'm if, if one week is not I'm good for you, take argument. a few weeks, doesn't matter. I'm trying to build my argument, you know. Yeah, build up your argument and then come. Inshallah, we'll have another discussion. It was a pleasure talking to you and uh, inshallah, we'll do it again. Yes, what, 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 what video? What, yeah, tell them your channels, brothers. No, okay, I think that's Sidawa, Sam Dawa. Always. Okay, and so on. Shim is a legend. I, I, I would say I won this. <laughs> I'm it's not about winning. It's about it's, a, it's about sharing I'm, yeah, I'm, sharing I'm, our scriptures. No, I, I, coming I to a conclusion. Like are good. Yeah, just like a yeah. Sometimes I feel you have, you have good arguments. You make good points, but sometimes I feel like we need to be we need to be more careful. Sometimes of just saying, for example, the Bible says God is a man. None of us are saying that God is a man. We're saying God became a man. There's a difference. Semantics. No, there's a big difference in that. Semantics. Because we're saying. Sorry, sorry. It's fine. We're, we're saying just, just to kind of, uh, kind of close. If I tell you, if I tell you, a caterpillar became a butterfly. Yes. Is it still the same being? <laughs> in essence, yes, because it, it, it's still the same being. Whereas God's essence is eternal. Well, the essence, essence is the same essence. Butterfly, caterpillar, same essence. No, it's not. In this case, God. Different nature. Came. Sorry, different nature, same essence. One was caterpillar, one was butterfly. It's okay. You I'll, see, this I'll, is what happens. I'll come, I'll come prepared next time. But Inshallah. no, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. No, but what I would also um, concede to is that the kind of Tawheed. The Quran is very specific. It declares, it just goes, Jesus, no, Jesus Which is the beauty, isn't it? it, it Simplicity is the beauty. Because if I explain Tawheed to my child, even three years old, four years old, when they start, when they start understanding a few things, they then they will understand. understand. But there's no way, and the only way a child will accept the Trinity is they just memorize it, you know, like without thinking about it. I, I think that, no, I, I, absolutely not. No? I, I, will, you auto, will you come to a conclusion that God is a triune God? Just without your Bible. Without your Bible, will you come to a conclusion that God is a triune God? Of course not. Without my Bible. But you see, people... Would, would, you, would, you, would you come yeah, to the conclusion yeah, that yeah, there's only yeah, one yeah. God people, the Bible? People... Would you know? Wait, wait. People would come to the conclusion that there is an almighty God yeah. and they will believe this almighty God is one. How do you know that though? Because you cannot verify that. No, no. Without, without any religious text, we're all... Actually, there have, been, there have been a lot... Wait, wait. There, there have been done a lot of research in this about 
people, about children, how they would, when they, when they are isolated, yes, how would they come to understand about, uh, about God or about supernatural, about things like that. Yeah. And they all came. None of them came to the conclusion of a triune God. But we believe that God is also one in essence. Yeah, with a, a human nature. Thing. Let's leave it there, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, Samson, no, okay, thank okay. you very much. No, honestly, mate, it, was, yes. it was good. Right. Jazakallah khairan. Yes. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hallelujah to Jesus Christ. <laughs> and the